Hey everybody, welcome back to our Advent series, A Traditional Christmas. Today I have with me another special guest, the Reverend Dr. Carl Kuhn, who is Professor of Religious Studies at Lakeland University, the Grace Chair of Religion here at Lakeland. And Carl is here to tell us a little bit about Caesar and what role he plays in the story of Jesus' birth. So Carl, tell us, how is Caesar important in the biblical story of Jesus' birth? Well, it's actually really important. And one of the interesting things about how we celebrate Jesus' birth is that we really don't give Caesar a lot of attention. Uh, I've only seen a couple of children's programs, uh, Christmas programs that include Caesar as one of the main characters. It's really easy to read through the story of Jesus' birth in Luke 2 and, and just gloss over the first couple of verses that mention Caesar and the census. But those details in the birth story really are very important in terms of helping us to understand what it would have been like for Jesus to be born in the Roman world. Caesar represented the apex of Roman power, uh, politically, socially, economically, and even religiously. And the, the mention of the census really serves to underscore that. The Romans would have performed a census for two reasons. One was to uh, help them to decide how much they could tax a province that was under their control. You learn from the census how many able-bodied males, how many households you had, and so then you would establish expectations for tax revenue based on those statistics. But it was also important militarily. If the Romans needed to conscript, conscript uh, males into military service, they knew what resources they had there for doing that. Or if a province were to rebel against Rome, they'd be able to know what were they dealing with in terms of how many able-bodied males that would possibly they'd be facing in opposition. And so we start that birth story with this mention of Caesar, the mention of the census. And again, we're at the apex of Roman power. We have Caesar in his throne room in Rome commanding the world to be counted. And this would have been extraordinarily inconvenient for those having to do this. And so we've got Mary and Joseph having to trudge from their home in Nazareth uh, to Bethlehem with Mary very, very pregnant, about to give birth. Um, and so just the inconvenience of that, the, vul the vulnerability of that would have been a very pronounced part of the birth story, as well as this extreme contrast between Caesar and Jesus. But more than that, more than those details, you know, in this story, we hear Jesus be proclaimed as Son of God, as Messiah, as Lord. Uh, we hear the angelic host saying it's, it's his birth that is good news for all of humankind. And the Romans would have said the very same things about Caesar. For the Romans, Caesar was Lord. Caesar was Son of God. It was his birth that was good news for humankind. And so the story of Jesus' birth really makes the rather extraordinary claim that it's Jesus who is the true Lord and Savior of humankind. It's the birth of this Jewish peasant infant in a feed box that is really going to change the world and to make the world a place of blessing, uh, to make the world into a place that's more in alignment with God's intentions for humanity. And so we tend to celebrate the story of Jesus' birth as this sort of warm and fuzzy, romantic kind of tale. Uh, but in Luke 2, it's, it's not that. It's a very edgy, even treasonous claim that it's not Caesar who is Lord of the earth, it's actually Jesus, this Jewish infant who is born and, and placed in a feed box, who's Lord and Savior of all. Yeah, and so as you said, um, all these things about the census, about what it would have meant for people living there, plus the inconvenience that would have put Jesus's family in, mm -hmm. plus these claims about Jesus' birth, we don't often think of those in our celebrations of Christmas, but they would have been very apparent for people living in Jesus' world and some of the early hearers of the Christmas story, that they would have mm -hmm. heard census and they would have thought right. all of those things. Yep. For them, that meant Roman control, it meant Roman power. Yeah. So yeah. why why is it important for us today to be aware of these things and to keep them in mind as we celebrate Christmas? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was, it's important for us today in a, in a way that's very similar to how it was important to folks back then. By framing the story that way, the birth story that way, uh, Luke was making it clear uh, what kinds of power, what kinds of behavior, what kinds of, of ways of taking care of one another really manifest God's intentions for humanity. Is it the way that Caesar rules the world that really manifests God's intentions for humanity? 
or is it the way that Jesus is going to serve and the ways in which Jesus calls us to shape the world that really manifests God's intentions for humanity? And so are we called to shape a world in which power and military might um, and economic might um, and military might rule the day? Or are we to try to shape and fashion a world in which service and self-sacrifice and love and compassion rule the day? And I think those issues are just as relevant for us as they were for Jesus and the Israelites back in the first century. What kinds of power do we embrace? What kinds of ways of relating to one another do we embrace as manifesting what God wants for this world. Because I think within our society today, the claim that um, that, that power is, is best manifested in military power or economic power, um, that fulfillment comes most from, uh, you know, seeking possessions for ourselves, uh, seeking to elevate ourselves at the expense of others. Um, there's still many messages and, I, and understandings of life within our world today which say that, that that's, where, that's where happiness resides, that's where power truly resides. Um, and just as, as Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, how is it that we can manifest that same activity of self-giving, that same activity of care and compassion, um, even when it contrasts? Uh, uh, pointedly to the way in which our world often works and the ways in which leaders in our world often speak and act. Thank you, Carl. Hopefully this historical context will be helpful for you in your Christmas celebrations when you hear those opening words of the Gospel of Luke about the census, but in all, all of our remembering of Jesus' birth and what his birth means in our world today. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you again tomorrow.